I'm Mark Terman, the Executive Director of Denison Forum. Welcome back to the Denison Forum Pastors Podcast. We look forward to having a conversation today that we hope will encourage you, equip you, and energize you in the work that God has put into your hands. And we are praying along with you that God would just show his favor and bless the work of your hands as you serve Christ in your church, in your ministry, wherever that may be, whatever form that may be taking today. We pray that God is in the middle of all of it and that you sense his strength, his joy, and his hope. And thank you for coming along for this conversation. We're going to talk about some things that may initially sound like they don't go together, which is prayer, spiritual formation, and artificial intelligence. Mm. And we're going to try to define some of those terms and uh, give you some handles as you join along with the rest of us in understanding how the world is changing, how technology is moving forward, and how those things impact ministry. Our guest today is Dr. Drew Dickens. Let me tell you a little bit about him as we eventually get into a conversation about our topic. But Drew is the founder of EncounteringPeace.com. We'll get him to tell us a little bit more about that ministry in a moment that he founded in 2018. Before that, he was the director of content for Abide Meditation app and was also president and CEO of Need Him Global Ministries for 20 years, a graduate of Baylor University, Dallas Theological Seminary, and also recently a doctor from Southern Methodist University with a degree in theological anthropology, which is going to be the first thing he has to define for us. <laughs> but Drew, welcome to the DF Pastors podcast. And as I said before, tell us something that we can't find on the internet or on the resume about you. <laughs> So you changed it on me. You said it's not on my resume, but now not on 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 the internet. <clears throat> uh, so how about one of my favorite ways of introducing myself? I stole from someone else's. I'm a follower of Christ, cleverly defined, clever, cle cleverly disguised as a, a husband of 42 years. We met at Baylor. Um, Fantastic. Father of two and uh, grandfather of two, which is one of the highest degrees deferred upon me as of grandfather. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's really who I am. All right. Yeah. Awesome. So we're glad to make the connection and to get to share a little bit about ministry. So, uh, yeah, just trying to wrap my head around what theological anthropology means. Big words. Uh, I think I have a basic e e explanation of both of those, but put them together. And what does that turn into in your world? Well, as you know, theological is uh, theos, uh, the study of the word of God. Um, anthropology, anthro, the study of man. So theological anthropology in uh, sort of a sociological direction would be uh, the study of uh, man's relationship with God and how we uh, interact with the divine, um, how we approach and encounter uh, the transcendent realm and how that's uh, changed over uh, the eons. And uh, so that, that's, that's my, my study specifically, which you'll get into in a minute. I'll, I'll give you a bridge, but specifically how the field of uh, artificial intelligence has uh, affected that, um, that encounter uh, over the last really uh, few years, five years. Okay. Well, yeah, so let's get into a little bit of definition here, and that has to do with uh, the terminology of, of generative AI. And let me kind of maybe put this into three buckets of what I've encountered with pastors so far, even in the mm -hmm. last, let's say, year or so, mm -hmm. which is uh, those pastors that hear the term AI and they just turn a deaf ear and they're like, that's the next whiz bomb coming out of the technology world. And they say everything is going to be different. Uh, I'll believe it when I see it. They are not the early adopters. Um, <laughs> and then you have those that are the early adopters and they are running toward it. They are, they are the ones listening to this conversation, perhaps, <laughs> that are already playing with chat GBT and other programs like it. Uh, they're intrigued by it. They're excited by it. They may be terrified by it, but they want to run toward it. Uh, and 
uh, these might be the same guys that, you know, were the first adopters of uh, all the best video games. But uh, either way, they're the ones running toward it. And then there's some that are in the middle, probably the majority, and I would fall in this mm-hmm. camp myself, which is I'm curious, I'm reading occasional things, listening to occasional things about generative AI and how it influences, impacts, and could connect to ministry, um, but not particularly working at depth with what uh, this next phase of technology and tools are all about. So let's just start there. And generative AI means artificial intelligence that continues to think on its own. Am I somewhere in the ballpark with that definition? I heard think on its own. Um, What was the first part of that? Is that that the best definition of generative AI? So AI at its core is a system, a platform um, that uh, can, can simulate human cognition. Um, generative AI is a branch of AI that then, uh, not to use the word in the definition, but would, can, can create new content from that system. So where you see generative AI is in, you mentioned ChatGPT, um, image generation. Uh, Elon just came out with his newest uh, Grok2, which is his newest AI platform that, that, that has an image generator as part of it. So it can, it can take uh, pre, let's first start with defining GPT, you mentioned, because it, it has, those, has those names in it. A generative right. pre-trained transformer. So um, pre-trained is, we haven't heard buzz on this uh, lately, but uh, over the last few months, um, you've heard uh, of OpenAI getting sued by the New York Times for for scraping data from their site and, and whatnot. Um, authors complaining about them, uh, you know, uploading books and things like that. So right. th- that's a, that's a, th- they're training the model, they're training the language model, the large language models <clears throat> on, uh, on how you and I talk and how we communicate and how we think and how we process data. So it's, it's training them uh, is the pre-trained. Um, you can fine tune it from there if you want to talk about that later as far as biases within the platform, but they're taking as much as they can. And, and I'm talking <laughs> terabytes worth of data and, and dumping it in there and saying, this is how we talk. This is how we communicate, um, is the pre-trained portion from that. Mm-hmm. Then it can, um, and this is the transformer and the generative part of it. It will generate new content as if, um, now there's a field of study within AI called NLP natural language processing. And so it will then take how we talk. You ask it a question. And, 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 and it has trained itself to then reply to us. Um, that's the human cognition part as if it were human. So it, it really is an AI platform is one that simulates human cognition and generative AI is able to then generate new content um, as if it were essentially. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So a lot to wrap our minds and thoughts around in that. Um, but let me pivot to this other side of the conversation, which has to do with spiritual formation Mm -hmm. and particularly with the exercise of prayer. So you've written a new prayer guide called Whispers of the Spirit, a 40-day guide to intimate prayer. You also founded a ministry called Encountering Peace, which is a unique approach, kind of an immersive, interactive kind of an experience of spending time with God. Talk about both of those things. Start wherever you want to, whether with its, uh, the, the website and the podcast, Encountering Peace, or with this new recent book, Whispers in the Spirit. Um, talk about that side of your ministry, and then we'll see how we can bring these two things together. And, and please try, because that's, <laughs> that, intersection, <laughs> that intersection is where I, I, uh, I sit most of, the, most of my days. Um, when I was at Need Him, which is and continues to be um, a uh, an evangelism response ministry, 
So the, the example I would always give is when you see Billy Graham on TV with a phone number to call, um, that would be need him. So we're essentially right. an evangelism outsource <laughs> counseling service, if you will. And so we just sat around and they still do sit around all day and talk to people about uh, what it means to have uh, a relationship with Christ. Mm-hmm. Not a bad way to spend your day. <clears throat> One yep. of the aspects of that conversation that always intrigued me and not to be cliche uh, is the power of prayer and even p- the power of the word prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end of a conversation, I could say, Hey, can I pray with you? And just the question would elicit tears um, uh, or they would hear me pray and ask for a transcript of that. Or I would ask them to pray the sinner's prayer, just hmm. blank stares. Don't know what that even looks like or means. Um, and instead of, you know, recite, repeat after me kind of thing, they would just come to a dead stop. And so the, the, the concept of, of offering, receiving prayer, and how most people engage with that has always fascinated me. Um, And so uh, I I really wanted to pursue that, uh, which led Mm -hmm. me then to Abide, which is a prayer and meditation app. And they needed an old guy with a seminary degree, um, you know, with a beard. And uh, and so they hired me to kind of oversee content. And uh, I I just really and still (laughs) remain fascinated on on the power of how we engage with God, how we encounter, Mm. not to pun intended, or perhaps pun intended, um, how we encounter and engage with the divine, the transcendent realm. Um, And uh, we all do, um, whether you would identify as a follower of Christ or not, um, prayer is something you and I could stop anybody in a parking lot and just say, hey, can I pray for you? And they'd say, yes. Um, it's It's a very positive thing. Yeah. And so I've always been drawn to it. You mentioned uh, encounter being, I uh, forget the wording you just used, but uh, an, an interesting collection of. Yeah, kind of an engaging, immersive kind of experience. Yeah, I really don't go into much detail. I do if you dig down into it, but uh, I'm, I'm really borrowing ancient traditions within the church for prayer. Um, and it's uh, practices such as uh, Lexio Divina, and uh, your listeners would, would be familiar with some of these, but you know, Lexio Divina and um, uh, 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 imaginative contemplation and the Jesus prayer and hesychasms and, and different uh, means of engaging that we've had from the Desert Fathers and since, since Acts um, uh, that has, have really kind of waned especially in the West, in the more uh, traditional Western Protestant traditions. And so really kind of drawing, drawing on some of those within the book Whispers. Um, and so there's, there is, uh, uh, there's different ways of engaging. There's imaginative contemplation. There's um, uh, uh, lit- liturgical kind of responses in it. And so it's really drawing on some of the ancient traditions that maybe um, we have uh, left behind within uh, more uh, of the Western Protestant traditions. Okay. So the book uh, draws its uh, inspiration and mm-hmm. instruction in many ways from mm-hmm. the story of Elijah, mm-hmm. uh, his encounter with God, the whisper of God at Mount Horeb. Mm-hmm. Uh, why, why 40 days? Is it because of the importance of that number in scripture? <laughs> uh, why Elijah? Um, and how are those uh, informative to the creation of the book? Uh, <laughs> boy, I, I would love to have a more spiritual answer for this, but um, I've written a lot of content over the last uh, 10 years, and 40 seems to be uh, a number that uh, uh, is able to capture the attention of people, and they're able to hold on to that attention. Um, I write a lot of content for uh, the Uversion uh, Bible app, and, um, and so just my, uh, my experience with them and how long those reading plans, um, uh, how many minutes <laughs> we're able to kind of stay in, in, in touch. I've got content on YouTube and, and that just seems like a, a, a manageable number. So uh, I would love to have a more spiritual answer on that. Um, as far as the other, I've always been drawn to the story, um, because so often, 
Um, you know, we're drawn to the thunder <clears throat> and the noise and the wind um, and, and, and the loud responses of God. Um, but it's in the stillness and in the silence and in the whisper uh, that um, uh, I think many of us uh, are, are, are touched by the most often. And um, mm. we're able to, to encounter and sense those. And in, in, I think in hindsight and in retrospect quite often, oh, that's what that was. Um, but we, we, it's, it's so, so typical, isn't it? That we scream out to just give me a sign. Um, mm. and so we, we ache for the, the fire, we ache for the, the earthquake and the noise, um, but it's in the whispers. And, um, so, so much of the book, you know, has us finding time to be still finding time to be alone. Um, uh, it draws on, uh, a lot of metaphors of, of nature and, uh, within the imaginative aspect of it. Um, and so uh, that, that's really why I was drawn to that story. Okay. So I, I wanted to ask, I don't know what the most frequent question you may get about prayer and having a uh, meaningful prayer life. Um, almost every Christian I've talked to has always said, well, I wish I, I wish I had a better prayer life, whatever we mean by that term. Mm -hmm. um, but it feels like so much of, of what people are pursuing is getting to a place in their faith where they can distinguish the voice of God from other voices in their experience. Uh, they draw on what Jesus says when he says, my sheep hear my voice and follow me. Mm -hmm. um, how do you respond to that? How do, you, how do you help people when they come and say, help me distinguish God's voice from all the other noise and all the other voices. And particularly, how do I distinguish it from my own voice? Mm. Uh, um, it's interesting. I mentioned that we're, uh, we're grandparents. We have two grandsons and, and with our other two sons that we have, um, I've always been uh, interested in uh, my ability and their ability to hear my voice. Um, our oldest two are in their thirties now. I can't whistle really loud, like at a football game. Um, about the loudest I can get is, okay, which I don't mm -hmm. think peaked any of your uh, VU meters. <laughs> on that. But just that is enough to still stop <laughs> in their thirties. They will both still turn around. Um, if we're you know, at a, over at someone's house and I'm trying to get one of their attentions, it's just a really easy, Hey, and they'll turn around from the other side of the room. Um, right. and, and it irritates them <laughs> that, that it still grabs <laughs> their attention. Um, and, uh, and it's so fun watching the two grandsons, uh, see me, hear me, will see my face in a crowd and, and come running. And I, I think of that so often, uh, of, um, he hears me that way. Um, I don't hear him that way. <clears throat> Um, he can pick out my voice, my face. I mean, my name's on the palm of his hand, right? Um, yeah. But I, I, I so often let the world um, uh, uh, get in the way of that. And, and it, when, when we talk about AI here in a moment, I'll, one of the concerns I have is, is, is it will, it's only making that harder. Um, mm -hmm. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, the first thing I always share is... Um, is to pray without ceasing. So what does that mean? Um, in scripture, it tells us to pray without ceasing, but you know, at the expense of what? And mm. so one of the things I mentioned as far as the ancient traditions um, is, you know, they, some well, within the Catholic traditions, uh, praying the rosary, um, the Jesus prayer was an ancient means of, of praying um, uh, a simple prayer over and over, um, but is more of just have a, have a mind of prayer through the day. Uh, so the first thing I always share with myself uh, and others um, is to, uh, uh, it, it takes some practice if you haven't uh, initially, but is to get into a place where everything becomes an opportunity for prayer, mm -hmm. even a simple acknowledgement um, and awareness uh, and encounter with. Um, uh, so the first is just is simply, is simply that is being intentional uh, to find uh, opportunities uh, to engage with God. Um, 
cliche stop and smell the roses, um, but uh, intentionally find moments to stop and look at a sunrise, sunset, a flower, a child, um, and acknowledge that as a gift, uh, as a moment of grace from him, um, an undeserved reminder of his presence in our life. Mm -hmm. um, second thing I always try to encourage is journaling. Um, I love looking back over my journal, like from a year later and saying, wow, I, I'm still there or I'm not there. Um, it right. is to, as I mentioned a moment ago, prayer is, uh, the, the stillness, the whisper of prayer is so often heard more clearly in hindsight is, um, by journaling, um, uh, our prayer and our, just our encounters with God is to, uh, have those opportunities to see back and realize that was his hand. Um, that was mm. his presence. Um, I say we have two grandsons. My, my wife and I talk about this quite a bit. We have, uh, we have three. Um, uh, the Lord took one of them home uh, four months ago. Um, he passed mm. away at wow. 18 months old. And uh, wow. so we're, we're very much in the, in the process uh, of, of grieving <clears throat> um, you know, with our children, uh, with our son and daughter-in-law. Um, yeah. and, um, but, oh my gosh, uh, you know, as I've journaled those thoughts, you know, to be able to look back and on that first day, you know, it's so easy to <laughs> just cry out, why, where are you? Why didn't you, um, right. and, and to look back then the next day or moments later and go, ah, that's where you were. Um, that's mm. whose hand I felt that's whose presence I, I, I encountered and experienced. And, um, so journaling, I think helps a great deal for that. So intention intentionality and journaling, um, I, I think are, 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 are two, uh, directions I, I send myself most often. And, and really sounds like an expression when Jesus said, you know, ask, seek and knock that part of that seeking is where that whole uh, experience of intentionality comes in mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that you're putting in, putting in the effort to actually learn some practices that, like you said, have been with us for hundreds, if not thousands of years, mm -hmm. uh, about trying to, to think meaningfully about what it means to intentionally pursue God. And mm -hmm. I love what you said. It made me, you know, we often hear people use this terminology, right of sight. Well, Mm -hmm. I, I can look back and see that the hand of God was moving and working in this way, even though I didn't really discern it in the moment. I can see it in, in hindsight. But the, the use of the word echo, that God God's voice back in those previous times in our life continue to echo, echo forward um, as the continuing expression of his voice mm -hmm. um, reaching out to us and uh, so it's not only what you see, but also what you hear. Let me, let me pivot us again back toward the technology side. Uh, really great journal article that you wrote uh, mm -hmm. about the digital shepherd. Uh, and again, artificial intelligence coming into this world of uh, spiritual formation, prayer, discipleship, growing into maturity in Christ. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what the digital shepherd uh, idea is, and then let that kind of be the pathway maybe we take to talking about how uh, artificial intelligence is starting to intersect the world and the conversation of spiritual direction. So spiritual direction is a, uh, by no means new. Um, it's becoming or has uh, become a little more uh, risen in, 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 in interest over the last uh, years, um, decade or more, um, <clears throat> uh, as a uh, position. Uh, you can now get a degree or a license in this. I don't know if they offered anything like that at, at Truett. Um, mm -hmm. but there's more formal training in spiritual direction and uh, spiritual uh, guidance. Um, and that's a, a can be a formal position that, that some take uh, to be a uh, guide, a mentor, uh, not a counselor really, um, but helping people navigate through the, uh, the spiritual uh, uh, questions um, as they, uh, for example, my wife and I, um, you know, seek out wise counsel uh, as we speak and going through this grieving uh, process. 
And so mm-hmm. a spiritual guide is someone who may um, you know, help facilitate uh, uh, going through different chapters in your life. Um, so my, my dissertation is on the effects of generative AI on spiritual direction and divine inquiry. And so one of my thoughts was um, I was doing mostly qualitative uh, work in my research, but I wanted some kind of quantitative uh, study. And so I, I designed, I, I took a, uh, an existing uh, large language model, part of uh, it was using the open AI um, language model. And I fine tuned it uh, to um, respond as uh, someone who uh, had been uh, trained extensively in the uh, art, the gift of spiritual direction. Uh, so mm-hmm. I loaded it with, <laughs> I loaded it with your degree and mine, um, just theologically. So it's very mm-hmm. evangelical Protestant training. Um, right. And, um, and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> me, me kind of deciding uh, what its spiritual training would be. Um, loaded several books into it uh, that focus on spiritual direction and guidance. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and then asked it to respond to my questions as if. And mm. uh, so that's the digital shepherd. I came up with that kind of coin that term um, and, and, and presented that on a website. It's actually, it's, I think it's still active us uh, uh, digital shepherd.org, I believe. And, okay. um, and when you go there, you, it just greets you and says hello and you start, you know, chatting away. And, mm. um, and it was a lot of fun to continue fine tuning it. Uh, there's a, a Roger, Rogerian technique within uh, psychology is where we get the, how does that make you feel question um, when you go through therapy. And um, I actually went back and, and, and fine tuned it on Rogerian uh, psychotherapy techniques. So it asks a lot of questions. Um, mm. uh, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? Well, how does, how do both make you feel kind of, kind of questions. Um, and, uh, and one of the most powerful words in, in, in all of, all of the world's languages is our name. Um, so I went back and fine tuned it to acknowledge me by name. Um, Mm. and which was interesting after I did that, well, at, at the end of your conversation, you're given an opportunity to take a survey, um, on how you felt engaging with it. And after I, one of the questions I I get to is, uh, did you feel like it was showing empathy towards you? Hmm. And after I had it start including names more often, the empathy score, you know, went (laughs) skyrocketing. Hmm. Um, Right. So, uh, so it's been really fascinating watching um, how people engage with it, how long, uh, what they enjoy, didn't enjoy. And I've been kind of fine tuning it, tweaking it, if you will um, uh, over time. And, uh, and I, I had that data as part of that article and, and within my hmm. dissertation as well. Yeah. And, and it's just kind of instantly mind blowing to think about, uh, <laughs> a website or an app, uh, some kind of a program that would be relating to us as a spiritual advisor. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things you bring up, uh, and this, this seems to be the recurring, question really in any context where I get into a serious conversation or listen to a serious conversation about uh, artificial intelligence, generative AI um, is the issue of ethical boundary, ethical concern, ethical boundary. And uh, I heard a doctor, very prominent doctor talk about this and talk about his concerns about that. This is, this is like a, um, this is like a nuclear missile being launched and we have no idea how big miss missile is. We have no idea where the missile's going. We have no idea what it'll do to the other people that it lands on and what it'll do eventually to us. It's kind of the general feel that all of these conversations have. Um, so what, where are you in terms of identifying concerns, ethical concerns that need to be put, especially around something like, the digital shepherd, uh, experiment that you did, uh, about how, uh, artificial intelligence needs to be 
approached with boundary when it comes to spiritual guidance, spiritual development? Uh, great question. Great questions. Uh, I, I don't know that I would disagree with whoever that doctor uh, was uh, that said it's like a it's like an incoming missile. Um, I, 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 I don't disagree with that. It's um, incoming. Um, boy, there were ser several things, several different directions I wanted to take here. Uh, incoming missile. Um, let's start there. Um, it's, it's not incoming, it's here. Hmm. Uh, we use it every day. Um, and we love using it every day. Um, every time you go home tonight and you, this weekend, you sit down with you know, your, your wife and say, let's watch a movie. You pull up Netflix and it gives you you know, recommendations, right? Right. Mm -hmm. If you listen to Spotify, uh, it gives you, you know, recommendations. If you're on Google, um, that, that, those recommendations, that's a recommendation engine that's built using AI. <clears throat> so it's pre-trained based upon what you've watched last weekend. Um, and it knows you, it knows you better than you do. Uh, if you look at Facebook, uh, groups, um, are you on Facebook much? Mm -hmm. So, so you know what Facebook groups are, uh, you're probably right. a member of a handful of them. Um, uh, and this is somewhat anecdotal, but, uh, they're, they're actual real numbers for this. I just don't know what they are, but they're close enough. Um, if you belong to five, I think was the number five Facebook groups, uh, they claim to know you better than your, uh, outer circle of friends. Um, if you belong to 10 Facebook groups, uh, they claim to know you better than your inner circle. You see where it's going. If you belong mm -hmm. to 15 or 20 or so Facebook groups, they know you better than you do. Um, mm -hmm. So it's no accident, you know, when we get onto social media, whether it's TikTok or Facebook or whatever, they're sending us content uh, that they know we want to look at. And in order for us to stay on the platforms longer. So we will eventually click an ad. This is all about ad revenue. Okay. All, all right. of it is about ad revenue. <laughs> um, and so um, it's not incoming. It's already here. And we actually enjoy using it because, oh my gosh, look at that. I hadn't thought of that movie in a long time. Or boy, look at that song on Spotify. I haven't heard that since junior high. I'm gonna... So we enjoy recommendation engines and that's AI. So a lot of this is already mm -hmm. here. Um, right. Uh, oh, generally it's, it's, it's thought or said that, uh, AI was invented by Alan Turing who invented the computer during world war II. So this has been around for a while. So it's not, mm. so wh what, why we're hearing about it now or why it's all the buzz now, uh, <laughs> someone joked, it didn't pop up on anybody's radar until, uh, junior high, kids in junior high figured out they could use it to write term papers. Um, mm. so it, it's, it's but it's growing stronger. It's getting smarter. And I, I use those terms in air quotes. It's collecting more data than it ever has before, faster than it ever has before, um, and processing that data faster than it ever has before. One quick sidebar in Texas, um, uh, the Texas Energy Commission, I probably made that up, but some group that reports to Austin on the power right. grid in Texas. Um, uh, this is probably a month old now. Uh, reported back to them that we in Texas need to double the size of the power grid in the next five years in order to maintain current status. So double it in five years. Wow. Half of that doubling will just be to cover the power required for uh, AI and Bitcoin. So it, this hmm. is, this is, this is pulling in resources, uh, at a, at a rate we've never seen before. So it's, it's learning faster. Mm. It's, it's, it's gathering faster. It's, it's creating faster uh, than it, than it has before. It's, it's like a hockey stick curve on, on the effect that it's having. So, so the first thing incoming mm. missile, it's already here. Um, the ethics around it, uh, powerful field of study right now. Uh, most universities that are studying AI, uh, the, the largest uh, of those are studying the ethics of it. Um, mm. I think the ethics must start at um, uh, the anonymity, uh, the confidentiality. 
um, because they are first off taking our content. You know, when you look at, um, for example, Google, <clears throat> um, uh, their language model uh, is pulled off data of us being on Google. Mm. You know, Meta, right. fa Facebook's model is pulled off of you being on Facebook. <laughs> and right. so think of the pictures you post, think of the comments you post, think of, the, you know, all that. And so um, all that is anonymized, um, but, but all that exists in the, in the, in the, in the, ether. Um, and there's some questions of anonymity. I mean, how, uh, mm -hmm. um, that, 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 that are important and, and should be, should be addressed where they're getting the data, um, from, uh, has been an issue from, from the very beginning, uh, and continues to be, um, uh, I don't want to get in the weeds too much on that. Um, but there, uh, it, it's what we're already starting to see is it folding into itself where it's mm. actually creating its own data. So instead of learning from how you and I talk, it's just learning from how it talks. Um, so it's mm. turning into sort of a giant echo chamber. So some of the ethics yeah. I think revolve around just um, uh, uh, the, the information that it's gathering um, and there is no shortage. We seem to be very willing to share everything <laughs> about <laughs> us. Uh, to to everybody, and you know that that yeah. water that water is way under the bridge, and um, uh, so I, I I think most of the ethics revolve around around um, what they're doing with the data, um, and uh, and then once I start engaging with let's say this this uh, this digital shepherd, for example, once I start engaging with it, <clears throat> um, uh, you know what comes of that conversation. Um, because mm -hmm. it's, again, it's you using that to improve the next conversation. Uh, right. so, um, but, but, but then something else that you said, which is interesting is, um, how different is that than us talking to a human pastor about these things? Because boy, that's never happened within the church, right? Where secrets have gotten out. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, how different is it from what we encounter every day with, do I really want to share that with that pastor or my spiritual director or my mentor or my Sunday school teacher? Do I want to share this right. request? I mean, it's a joke, but unspoken. I mean, <laughs> we, yeah. we all share the unspoken prayer requests. Um, uh, and so we're, we're, we're aware that our data is, gets compromised even within the church by humans. So it's, it's really yeah. not much different than that. But then, right, you know, even that, right, raises questions of accountability. Well, in theory, at least, uh, if you're sharing something, something confidential with a person and they violate that confidence, we, we reasonably think that there ought to be some kind of accountability to that. If you were applying that to uh, something like the Digital Shepherd, how would accountability even look if, yeah. you know, if you could even consider it? Mm -hmm. Which you know, brings up just a whole uh, wagon full of more questions. Um, <laughs> Welcome to my but, world. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just wondering uh, at your, where your thoughts are right now. I mean, it's, obviously, it's mind blow blowing to think that, hey, um, uh, a chat bot could be as good in some ways, some people might even say better, at uh, talking a person through than what would happen if they went to see their priest or their pastor, their spiritual director, uh, even a close friend. Uh, interesting. One of the things you point out in some of your writing is that it actually has the potential to make us feel more lonely, more isolated, um, even though we might say um, that our engagement with our, our experience with it, we felt that it was very uh, empathetic toward us. Um, but at the end, we might evaluate it and find ourselves experiencing a higher level of loneliness. Um in my mind goes in a number of different ways, Drew. One of those is, okay, if they, if if a chatbot was monitoring all the places that I read in the Bible, all the scriptures that I listened to, you know, what my reading Bible reading plan is, would it start suggesting to me, well, you like that Bible reading plan or you like that verse, now you'll probably like this verse. And you can see how a language model would bound, would bounce you through the scripture based on an algorithm that um, followed your preferences or some other thing. 
it, it's just crazy to think about all the ways that it could go. Um, are you seeing any sense in which it, it can be helpful to our journey of faith in prayer and to our spiritual formation? How can not just, not just technology. I mean, I'm happy to be able to read the Bible anywhere I go because I have my phone with me. Okay. Um, we all appreciate and enjoy those kinds of things. Are you seeing potential benefits, particularly to AI, um, that you're excited about? How much time do we have left? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's Absolutely. call it three minutes from here. <laughs> let's call it three minutes. Um, uh, first off, let me back up uh, about, can you imagine a language model that would follow your reading and suggest others? Oh, that's that that's long past. Uh, we are, uh, that's, that's the Uversion Bible app, by the way, uh, they're using this extensively. Um, and so for it to be able to say, if you like this, you'll like this again, that's a recommendation engine. That's a low bar. Right. That's, that's, yeah. that's easy. Um, but it reminds me of my wife and I have this conversation all the time. I think one of the things love you version, by the way, in case you're listening, um, use them. Extend, we all do. Uh, but one of the things, um, I think that we have, fallen victim to, uh, I, I won't point any fingers to any one organization because we see it everywhere, are coffee mug verses, um, where uh, you know, a bumper sticker verse or whatever, where, where it's taken completely out of context and has nothing to do, you know, whatever. That's, that's right. Jeremiah talking to Israel, not, you know, a coach talking to a football team or whatever. Um, but I, so I think we've all fallen victim to... Um, uh, something, whether it's a coffee mug or AI, offering us a quick nugget of scripture. Um, mm -hmm. And so I can check off the spent time in the word today box instead mm -hmm. of really doing the hard work of sitting down by, by, by lamplight and, and, and tearing into just consuming the word of God. Um, uh, nothing, uh, uh, th there's so many tools that, that allow us to take shortcuts in that. Uh, so AI is not new in its ability to, uh, to, to do that. Um, you mentioned uh, things I'm excited about. Um, I, I, think, I think some of the easiest benefits for a pastor who's going to be this group is just the increased efficiencies uh, that they can glean from AI. I did this for my pastor. Um, uh, he, he asked me at a, at a Saturday party, we were, he said, what can this do for me? And I said, um, you know what? Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, at about 1230, um, they have three services. The last one lets out at noon. Uh, about 1230, I'll show you tomorrow. Um, so at 1230, I had downloaded the audio uh, of the sermon, transcribed the sermon, um, had AI create the transcription, um, had it then generate, uh, I think four different languages in it. So I, I did the transcription in Spanish, German, Portuguese, whatever, several others. Um, it created an outline of it. Uh, it, it, it came up with the best quotes from it. I generated, um, uh, social, uh, uh posts, uh, for him to upload. Uh, it created images of those passages. Um, came up with a, a workbook based on the sermon to use in a Sunday school class with study questions. Um, mm. Within <laughs> less than five minutes. Um, so I said 1230, it was done at 1205. Um, <laughs> and uh, sitting in his, um, you know, sitting in his inbox. Uh, yeah. he, he emailed me about one o'clock and said, you in my office tomorrow. <laughs> and he said, oh my gosh, you know what? Uh, and so I think just the efficiencies of it um, yeah. are, are mind blowing. And so you didn't go to seminary. I didn't. Uh, well, I'm sorry, maybe you and I did, but I'm not a pastor. Um, mm -hmm. Never pastored a church, but pastors um, didn't go to seminary and become a pastor so they could uh, spend 10 hours on a Sunday afternoon trying to outline a sermon they just did. They're supposed to be doing visitation, counseling, encouraging, teaching. Right. Uh, and so the, the ability for AI to, um, to 
at, at a magnitude of scale, increase the efficiencies of their, of their, of their work so they can spend time doing what AI can never do, uh, which mm. is be a human to a human. Um, right. Have Christ in us and through us touching lives of, of a congregation. Sorry, I get really excited mm. about this. But I think, I think the, the lowest hanging bar is just improving the efficiencies. You mentioned three buckets in the beginning. Um, blowing it off because it's the next big thing. I don't want to take a lot of time, but I can blow that issue out of the water really fast. And then early yeah. adopters, you said, and then the, the middle one is just those that are in the middle, kind of just curious. I think there's a fourth. Um, and those just think it's just flat out evil. Um, I've been told mm. to my face, this is a work of the devil. Um, right. And, uh, and so I, I think no doubt Gutenberg had this conversation over the printing press. No doubt. Mm. Um, I worked really closely with the Graham organization for years. I know the pushback they got when they started putting the gospel on secular radio in the beginning. Um, and so we have this interesting relationship the church does with technology and we so right. often dismiss it as satanic early, um, and then use it to, you know, expand the kingdom like it's never seen before. So I, 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 I think, um, I think we're at a stage now where, um, uh, no, it's not the next big thing it's here. Um, and it's not going away. Uh, it's already too integrated into everything that we do. Um, I think I, the number I came up with the other day was nine out of the top 10, um, largest companies in the world, um, have gone all in on AI. Um, right. and, and you look at the, the, the billions and billions, trillions that they're investing in this, uh, this isn't, you know, uh, this isn't the next iPod or something. Um, and it's here. So how can I use it to increase my efficiencies as a pastor so I can focus on what I was called to do is, is what yeah. I get excited about on the, the positive uh, effect of this. Well, that's a good word. And that, you know, and that's the thing for us to look forward to and, there, and to realize that, you know, uh, a, artificial intelligence and generative AI versions of it didn't catch God by surprise. Um, <laughs> that he redeems all that he sends or allows and he sends and allows a whole bunch of stuff that takes a while for us to get our, uh, our mind and our lives around. And that's going to be true of AI, whether it's in a spiritual context, a medical context, a business context, uh, or a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. Um, but we, we have to keep ourselves grounded in Christ and grounded in his word because all of these things are going to need ethical boundaries. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, you know, and like I said, getting around to that thing that is distinctly human, which is being a human to another human being mm -hmm. and being a human being in relationship with God. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing will able be able to do that for us. And we're glad about that, mm -hmm. um, that uh, we we know that that's not going to change in that way. But there's a lot for us to think about here, a lot for us in ministry to think about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I. I I go back to an example I bumped into probably 15 months ago, which was the, the pastor who, who asked chat GBT to write a letter to his staff, inviting them to a Christmas party mm -hmm. and, you know, took it, took the thing less than 30 seconds. And it was way better than any of the five previous letters of invitation that he had written to his staff <laughs> and mm -hmm. just simple things like that. So that human beings can, in many ways, be freed up to do even better, more important things. It's a couple of years you know? old now. There's a funny story of a, of a, of a rabbi in New York uh, that had it write a, uh, a sermon, I suppose, uh, from the pulpit. I'm not sure. Um, and had it, I mean, read word for word uh, what uh, Chad GPT did. Actually got a standing ovation at the end of his sermon. Um, <laughs> and, and, it, and it broke him. He's like, I've, yeah. been, I've been a rabbi here for 20 years. And nobody so much as has moans or, or sighs or whispers when I'm done. And now someone else writes it for me. So, yeah, it's just kind of a it, it, yeah. it, it forces you to ask yourself, uh, you know, what is what is my role in this? Yeah, for sure. Right. Right. Well, Drew, thank you for your work and thank you for your time. Uh, we could go on for several more hours easily. <laughs> um, but if people want to follow you, they can find, follow you at EncounteringPeace.com, dot com, mm -hmm. and uh, the book is also available. I assume there as well as other book distributors. 
Mm -hmm. book is Whispers of the Spirit, A 40-Day Guide to Intimate Prayer, uh, which everything in our faith and and life with God uh, either starts there or comes back there in Mm -hmm. one way or another Mm -hmm. in that connection of just what it it means to learn to relate to God in a meaningful, intimate, and consistent way. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for all your help with that as well and how these two things are weaving together. And uh, we encourage you to check out Drew's work. Go and find his podcast and uh, check out his website at EncounteringPeace.com. And we look forward to talking with you next time on the DF Pastors podcast. God bless you, and thank you for listening. Thanks.